Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Mike from Comp3 Interactive here. And today we're going to be taking a look at JSON serialization to save and load data from your game. Now JSON has its benefits and also its downfalls just like anything else. The positives being it's very easy to use, it's really easy to set up and it's also in plain English. So when you're checking your save files yourself, you can actually see that the data has been written in there. But that can also be a downfall because it means if you can read it, then your players can read it as well and potentially edit the data itself. Now, there's two ways to mitigate that. One being only use a JSON save file in place of, say, player prefs, where you're only going to be saving data that you don't mind if the player has access to. Or you could even run all your data through encryption. So by the time it saves to the JSON file, it isn't in plain English anymore. This tutorial isn't going to cover that though, what this is going to cover is how to just save and load basic JSON files with your game data. So let's jump straight into it. So I'll just give you a quick walkthrough of what I already have. I have a save object, which is a serializable class. To be able to save your own custom classes, they're going to need to be marked with system.serializable, so bear that in mind. And this is the data that we're going to save. We're going to have the player name, level, amount of gold, and how many lives they've got left. Really simple stuff. And then over here, I've got a save test script, which is going to be attached to a game object. And all it's going to do is it's going to display our save object in the inspector, Every time I hit the space key, we're going to save the data that we've got in there. And whenever I hit the return key, we're going to load that data back up. So let's go and create our save manager class. So that's going to be a standard C sharp script. And we're going to call it save manager. And we'll open this up in Visual Studio. Now we don't want this to be attached to a game object. We want this class to just be accessible throughout the game without it being in the project. So we'll remove mono behavior. And what we can do, we can make this class static. So what a static class will do is make sure that we can't make an instance of save manager, but we can still access this singular instance throughout our project. So what are some things that we're going to need in our save manager? Well, we're going to need to be using the Unity engine. We're also going to need to be using system.io because the built-in JSON serializer will serialize your data into a JSON string, but it won't actually save a file. So we're going to have to manually save our file. Now we're going to need a few variables. We're going to need a public static string for our directory. Another public static string for our file name. And we're going to need two static methods. So that's going to be a public static void. This one won't return anything. And we'll just call this save. And we're going to need one more public static. This time we are going to return something. We're going to return a save object. And this one is going to be our load method. Now save is also going to need to take in a save object. Okay, so we'll start by defining our variables. So our directory, we're going to want this to be saved in the persistent data path for the project. Now we can't call application.persistentDataPath in the string declaration. So what we're going to do, we're just going to call this save data for now with a slash at the start and a slash at the end. And our file name, we'll just call it my data. That needs to be a string. My data dot txt it's going to be a standard text file so we'll work on our save method first what we're going to need to do we're going to set up a string and we'll call it dir for directory and we're going to stitch together the application dot persistent data path plus our directory name now first thing we need to do we need to check if the directory dot exists and we'll pass in a directory. So with the exclamation mark here, this is checking that if this doesn't already exist, we're going to directory dot 
create directory. So this will make sure that we have the directory that we're trying to save in so we don't get any weird errors. So after that, we're gonna create one more string. We're gonna call this JSON, and this is gonna be our JSON data. So we'll set this equal to Unity's JSON utility dot to JSON. And inside here, all we're gonna do is pass our save object in. So what that's gonna do, that's gonna pass your save object into a JSON string format. So now with that string, we can do file dot write all text. We wanna pass the path in, which is gonna be our full directory plus our file name. And the data that we wanna to save to that file is our JSON string. And that is our save method completed. So let's jump over to the load method. So in this one, we're gonna to wanna to check for a full path. So we will call application dot persistent data path plus our directory plus our file name. So that'll be the full path name for our file. And we also need to create a new save object. Again, we'll call this SO and we'll set that to a new save object. And right at the end, we want to return that save object, that'll get rid of our little red line there. So before we return that, what do we want to do? Well, similarly to the save method, we want to check if our file exists and we'll pass in our full path, then we want to load the data. We'll create a string called JSON again, and this time we want to do file dot read all text and pass in our full path. So again, the same as in our save method, we now have a string, which is just our JSON data. But now we want to convert this into a save object format. So we'll set our save object, SO, equal to JSON utility dot from JSON. And this takes a generic parameter, which is the type that you're trying to pass this JSON into. In this instance, we're trying to make a save object. So we'll pass that in in the angled brackets and then pass our JSON string into the method. Now, if our file doesn't exist, we'll just put out a debug.log save file does not exist. And then we'll just be returning the empty save object with default values. So now that should be our saving and loading class completed. So if we pop into our save test, where we want to save the data when we press space, we can just call save manager dot save and we'll pass in our save object from our inspector. And similarly, in the load, we can call save manager dot load, but this time we want to set our save object in the inspector to the result of the load method. So we just jump back over into Unity. We see that we have our save test script attached to our player and we have nothing inside it as we'd expect. So we can go ahead and play this game. I use the term game very loosely and we can type in some data. So we'll have my level 9001, gold, 100 and lives. I've got five lives left. We can press spacebar now, and that will have saved our data. So if we go ahead and change all this data to something completely nonsensical, and press the return key, we see that we revert back to our saved data. So we can already see this is working, and if we go into our persistent data path, which is in my instance, in my C drive, users, my user, app data, local law, your company name, I haven't set one for this, it's just a default company, and the project name is tutorials. And here is our save data folder that we created for the directory, and my data, the text file, which should contain our JSON. And as you can see, it does. We have a player name, Mike, player level, 9001, and so on. So as you can see, it's quite easy for me to 
amend this to 10,000 gold, save that, play the game, and then load the data, and we see it's dragged in 10,000 gold. Obviously, this isn't ideal, so like I said before, use this method sparingly, and where you're not really too bothered about the player amending the data. And it's as simple as that. This is easy to expand on, as now we have our save manager, which takes in a save object to save. Our save object doesn't have to be just these fields. We could add as many as we wanted in, and then when we go to serialize our object, the JSON will be overwritten with the new fields. Now, they will default, obviously, to the base values, whatever they may be, zero or null. Personally, I always use this method rather than player prefs, just because I find it a lot easier to use, and it's a lot easier to debug any errors because you can see the data right there in front of you without having to go through your registry to find the player, for, player prefs files. In an upcoming video, I'm going to be showing you binary serialization, which is the best way to save data that you don't want your player to be messing around with. So make sure you watch out for that. So I hope this has been useful. I hope you've learned something and I'll see you again soon. If you've learned something today, then drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. You can also find us over on social media for more bite-sized Unity and C-sharp tips. I've been Mike for Comp3 Interactive and I'll see you again soon.